All right, we're now going to be looking at additive for its own sake. So this isn't additive for realism. This isn't additive to then be used in more of a subtractive sense like we just looked at in the last video. This is additive. Now, there are some subtractive elements. They call them different things like brightness. It's really more of a low pass filter, but we're just gonna be focusing on the additive method and the additive portion of this instrument. You can experiment with the rest of this on your own. I just wanna focus on what makes this additive. All right, so let's get started. We have a saw wave here. And the first thing that's very unique about this is we have control over the number of partials. Okay, so 324 being the maximum. So normally when you have a saw wave, it goes on forever. But notice when we're down low, it just cuts off, okay? And that has to do with the number of partials that are um, involved. As I go up higher, it's gonna look like more of your generic saw wave and it fades off uh, beyond our range of hearing. But what I could do with that is I could actually take the number of partials and bring it down. And so this is just removing sine waves from the top. Not a low pass filter, it's not gradual, it's extreme. And you can see that like so. And then the other thing I can do is I can set the balance of the fundamental. All right, this isn't something you you basically never see this in an instrument, but this is controlling the very first sine wave that's generated. So if I go up higher, let's bring our partials down a little bit. We're going to see the balance of this fundamental versus the rest of the harmonics that have been generated. Nothing. To full blown. And for the most part, this is called laser bass. So you're normally gonna leave the fundamental alone. We can add a little bit of beating, which is very interesting. I'm not sure how this exactly happens with these um, individual sine waves, but I think it's happening with each and every one of these partials, because normally for a beating effect to occur, you need more than one saw wave. You need waves stacked on top of each other that then are slightly detuned. This is called beating. So it may not really be a detuning. It might just be a moving of each of these partials. And you can hear as we go up, it remains consistent. There's no change as we play up and down the keyboard. We're on a subtractive synth or on an actual physical synth. You can kind of hear that resetting or them kind of going in and out of phase. But here it's just a part of the balance. All right, and if I go into uh, multi-saw here, I can actually uh, em emphasize this even more. And now this is a little bit more like what you expect with your uh, static effect. But you'll notice that as I go up with my number of multi-saws, this thing is only capable of 324 partials. So when I put like six on top of each other, I'm not able to get any information here at the top. As I go down, you can see they start getting added back in. So I'm liking this sound here. And we can move on to the next box, which is attenuation. And now this is giving me control over a group of these partials and which I want to emphasize more than others. So we can make this really extreme by going up to like 64. I want you to be able to just see what's happening here. So these are the partials that are being emphasized. We can change that. We can go back the other way. Try out some different patterns. And this is honestly just something you have to experiment with. But this is totally different from anything we've looked at before, right? This is using some sort of algorithm to determine which partials are emphasized, which ones are lowered. We really couldn't do that before. And that's what I think really makes this such an additive synth. Uh, we can adjust like the phases of these. We can put them all random or like change the shape. as we go higher, just being a little sharper. Go down low. And 
and this is really the power of then the laser base so we can continue on here and we can now go into the ratio and this is going to again move some of these partials so this is ratio you often hear with um fm synthesizers but just watching what happens with these partials here as i bring this up We have some different options here. And this is interesting because you can see how with this ratio set up, we've just lost some partials entirely. We can break some of them back in. So because it's using some form of multiplication, that's why I imagine we're losing some. We can go into the ratio add. We can attempt to fill in that gap. There we go. And now we get to have a little bit of fun with the dispersion. You know, watch and see what happens here. And again, it's not even necessarily about knowing what each and every one of these controls is doing. It's about understanding the broader method that's going on here. And that's that we are just changing all of these partials. We're not doing anything else with it, right? It's using formulas to adjust that. And inside of Reactor, you can always turn the info on and you can like, you know, highlight over it to figure out what exactly is going on with the dispersion. Uh, my vision is so bad, I can't even read what this says. It says the dispersion section simulates the natural rigidity of material like a string bending up the higher partials of the signal the dispersion section has a string influence on the sound okay it's just repeating the same stuff uh, recommendation is of course just to experiment but we know that it's impacting the partials um, each of these individual sine waves in one way or another and that's what's making this uh, guy additive so there's just nothing It's not doing a whole lot because of the feeding, I think, that we have set up here. Let's bring down this. Bring this number up. And just see what we can do. spend hours and hours playing with and as you can tell when it's me at the helm sometimes I just get a little bit distracted and like with our other forms of synthesis that we've talked about so far with physical modeling and now um, with additive there's a certain degree of experimentation that's required you know I'm not going to know exactly what's going to happen every time I turn one of these knobs all I know is I'm not using a filter. I'm not using a wave shaper. I guess in some ways this is a little bit like a wave shaper, but what I'm doing is I'm actually getting control over these individual sine waves. And that's what's responsible for um, this sort of a sound, which is very unique and hard to come by with any other instrument. And I think that's why um, I enjoy this course so much is that we're looking at all of these different types of instruments that are capable of getting you very unique sounds.